What is up, everybody? Happy Friday night to you. It's Friday night, right? I do. I just sent the kids off to their father, right? We have a whole anthem for his pickup on Friday. You know, I have a song. It's called Baby Daddy Get Your Kids Friday. But, you know, my kids, dad and I, we have a really good co-parenting relationship with for our kids. We are just, we're all about our kids, but I feel like we're better friends now that we're not together. So it's like, I don't know, We this has been a great relationship for years and, you know, it just works. But it's baby daddy, get your kids Friday. Finally, I have some damn time for me. Now, can I get them tomorrow, Ninja, please? Just get your kids so I can get to me. Hey. I don't see how women make it hard for their kids that to have a relationship, pick them up. It's like, are you crazy? Do you understand the free time a a great co-parenting relationship affords a woman? I mean, I can't account for the stupidity of others, but I love my children, but I also love my free time. And it's like my kid's dad is a great dad. I mean, we have a great relationship. We live like seven minutes apart. So our kids really don't go a day without seeing either one of us because we just we just cooperate like that. Like, it's just greater. He's 17 years older than me, too. So it's like, and I'm a very reasonable woman. So I think he got really fortunate having a baby mama like me because it's like, look, bro, I don't like a lot of drama. You don't like a lot of drama. So we're just going to keep this drama free. I think at the beginning, it was probably a little drama because obviously circumstances would make things dramatic but I'm one of those people I don't like I believe in the reasonableness of different arrangements and situations and for me I care about my kids more than I care about myself that's just me but with that being said you know I think everybody's relationship is different. You know, I think they approach their relationship differently. And I said that I would try to stay away from talking about female rap and hip hop, you know, but it is a weakness of mine. And there are some talking points beyond, you know, measuring the music, you know, even though I will say, you know, if I, like I said, if I'm just looking at it from a sport and not a, from a, lens of fanaticism, right? You know, you you got to give JT her flowers for, you know, going out and actually creating a vibe, you know? Um, I think JT, you know, from the City Girls, she, to me, her solo pathway has been one that I'm actually proud to see her kind of transition into. You know, I think that, you know, there the, a lot of these hip hop girls. And again, don't think that this content is all about political stuff. If you just started following it, it's about everything. <clears throat> but you know, a, a lot of these rap females, right? They come into the industry, come into the game. I, I truly believe for the love of hip hop and the love of the craft, but they understand that they have to sacrifice an aspect of themselves to really get pushed in this industry that likes to mold the narrative of what black women are projecting about themselves and even the messaging to black women. So, you know, if they're like, you know, BBLs are popular, then that's what they want, you know, these female rappers to be getting and projecting onto their audiences. And that's why you see a lot of women risking their lives to get BBLs you know, and all these other kind of cosmetic surgeries so that they can look like a vixen like these women, right? You got, you know, Ice Spice, who I think is the least talented female rapper that they're promoting right now, but she has sex appeal and she's beautiful. But, and and when I say she has sex appeal, you know, I think she is, she is visually appealing. You know, she loses her sex appeal when she opens her mouth. 
right? Bec and I realize that sometimes there are some pretty women who, if they don't really, you know, have anything super valuable to say, you know, sometimes they just need to sit there and be pretty, right? Because that is your value right there. Right. I talked about in my last one of my last live streams, the five social values. There are some people who ha are just very pretty and that is their value. And they don't really have much else but that they have to either develop it or whatever. I Spice, she's not a very talented lyricist female rapper, but she's appealing to the eyes. And so the industry can definitely leverage her to, you know, appeal to men who may find women that look like her attractive, right? But she's not talented and she's not even organically sexy. She's not really a sexy girl, right? There, you can actually tell when a woman has a natural, you know, sort of sexual vibe to her, right? Because, you know, it, it's sort of organic in the way that she moves and how she articulates. Um, I think that I Spice is a pretty girl, right? And I think the industry wants her to be this bop and sexy girl, right? And I really just think that she's a pretty chill girl. And, you know, when you're doing something that's not really organic to who you are, people can kind of see it. And I think that's why I Spice is not doing very well, right? But the real purpose of this blog is to talk about Cardi B, right? Because right now, Cardi B is going to drop some new music, a new album, possibly next year, this year, whatever, right? But, you know, obviously her marriage is in the spotlight again. And people are saying that, <clears throat> you know, she is seriously going to divorce Offset this time and she don't care about these dudes. Cardi B even made a point of talking, um, addressing, you know, the allegations that she drugged and robbed men. And I thought it was very interesting because she claims that on her album that she talks about that she drugged and robbed men and that she would actually do it again. Listen to Cardi. <clears throat> Excuse me. I talk too much. Let me see if I can play this. Oh, this is Cardi B in a... I keep writing Cardi whatever, Rob, man, whatever crap. So what? I'll do it again, bitch. I don't give a fuck. I, ain't, I don't feel bad. Y'all know how... I, I don't feel bad for no niggas. I feel bad for no niggas. I'll do it a fuck again. All right, so... And y'all think y'all gagging. I, I talk about that shit on my album, too. I don't give a fuck. Do it the fuck again. But why do I keep writing Cardi, whatever, Rob, man, whatever crap? So what? I'll do it again, bitch. So she said that she wrote it on her. She talked about it on her album. She felt like, you know, people think that they're gagging when they're, you know, bringing that thing up. She said she'll do it again. And the one thing I want to make a point of saying is that Cardi B is not a black woman. She's constantly being appropriated in black culture. And I think, honestly, she needed Offset, and he probably knew this too, to really get her black people cred, much like Drake. Not saying, and I think that there's levels to this credit stuff, right? When you're talking about like street cred, right? Cardi B is from the Bronx, right? You know, arguably, People could say that she came from nothing like most people, poverty line, Hispanic culture person, you know, urban Hispanic person, right? And she, you know, however she got propped up, she worked her way up to the top, however she did it, right? But she's not a black woman, right? And she's constantly, and I feel like, you know, people should really give, you know, Cardi the same treatment that Kendrick Lamar gave Drake, where we don't really want to hear you saying the N-word, right? We're really tired of hearing you say the N-word. And I know Fat Joe would get on the mic and say, oh, Hispanics can say the N-word all they want to. But there are a lot of Hispanic people that do not like Black people, and they're very racist towards Black people. So, you know, I often question, you know, when we're talking about the N-word in, in terms of the camaraderie phrase, you know, and who can say the word, right? 
um, I can't, I, I, I kind of question, you know, sometimes who is, um, who, who should really be saying it. Um, but off of that, you know, Cardi B, she has this black male husband and somebody said that they think that, you know, um, offset lights, these light skinned Hispanic women. I really don't think that's true. I really do think deep down offset does like black women. And I feel like the women that he are, he's cheating on her with, even though they're fair skinned black women, they're still black women. And I think that, you know, there has to be, you know, something said about the just a different cultural mindsets of different women and what certain men are comfortable with, right? And I don't think that like with Offset and Cardi, I think they both saw opportunities in each other. She was at, you know, kind of getting up on her career. He was already established with the Migos, right? So, I mean, I heard somebody said that, you know, without Cardi, you know, Offset would be nothing. It was like, he was actually out with bangers before her. So I'm not really sure why people would say that, right? But I think that Migos had their downfall. And so right when they were kind of at their downfall point, trying to kind of redirection their group, Cardi was kind of on her rise. And so I think that there was an ebb and flow there where they kind of had an advantage with each other. But Offset does not give, you know, an exclusive guy. Right. I don't think, it, you know, when guys rap about certain things, when they sing about certain things, you know, they're really telling you about what's kind of true of their character. And so I think that and then when you look at Cardi B's whole, you know, personality, her come up, she came from the stripper world. She is admitted to drugging men, having sex with men. You know, she's saying this in her music, in her own words. And, you know, you can listen to her mixtape and you can, in some of her older interviews when she was first coming up, and she was very open about some of the things that she used to do as she was kind of climbing her way to the top, right? And, you know, for what it's worth, you know, she, I, I don't think that being with Offset was her pretty woman moment where he was going to really just turn a hoe into a housewife. And and I think that's what she was probably hoping for. Like he was going to turn a hoe into a housewife. But the problem is, you know, when you look at even just Cardi B's art form, you're still kind of a hoe in a lot of ways, even if you don't cheat on him, even though there's allegations that she did cheat on him, you're still a hoe right? Because of how you're projecting yourself. And a lot of women don't realize it's like when your man say, I don't want you to wear X, Y, and Z out because you're showing too much this and you're push. you know, it's really because men don't like other men coveting their wives. And Cardi B's whole art form is about, in, in, a, in a lot of sense, this femme fatale, half naked, pornographic, harlot, you know, culture woman where she is parading herself around other men, obviously that for, you know, not necessarily, she doesn't want them to covet that her, but at the same time, that's the result of parading like that. And in a sense, she needs them to cover her because she's trying to sell records. She's trying to maintain some sense of popularity. And I've said this before, rap culture, women, are not good housewives. I mean, people can disagree with that all you want to, but when you're singing about certain things, projecting about certain things, you know, it's like you still are sort of, you don't have to be stripping, right? But when you're on a video over-sexualizing yourself, talking about what you do to your man, right? Talking about all your abilities, right? And what you can do on a penis, right? You know, you not even if you say like I'm singing to my man, right? A lot of these women are not singing specifically to anybody, right? And their relationships are obviously very ambiguous. And what's really interesting is that with Cardi and Nicki Minaj cases, these two are married women doing this. I mean, I saw Nicki Minaj parading, gyrating, going on. You know, when when her Pink Friday two tour first kicked off. I saw a video 
a, one of her dancers and her husband must have got with her at on, on some point about that dancer because he never really got that familiar with Nikki again Kitty probably beat his ass or, or, or threatened to and Nikki was like okay I'll make sure he's safe far away right because if you look at that Pink Friday 2 tour after that little over sexualized moment dude was feeling himself too much we never saw him do that again. I don't even feel like that dancer was even a part of the tour anymore, or he was maybe a shadow away from Nikki so that Kenny doesn't kill him. But off of that, you know, Cardi B and Offset, you know, this is a normal story. I think they're like the Timu or Wish Bobby and Whitney. I have called them this before, and I believe that they are. They are the Timu, Bobby, and Whitney. And with Timu, Bobby, and Whitney, right, we're seeing this ebb and flow of just, you know, different relationship issues all around the album drop, right? And, you know, even if she's truly divorcing him, right, you know, kudos to you. I mean, obviously, infidelity is grounds for divorce, right, and remarriage. But here's the thing. A lot of people think Cardi B, she's rich right? She's famous. She's Cardi B. She can get any man that she wants. No, Cardi B can get any man that's lower than her that she wants, that doesn't make as much money as her that she wants, right? She can get any of those, but she's never going to be able to get a man on her level, right? Because obviously there are a lot of men, they don't want to deal with women who are at an equal level, to them because it's the mindset that is created in the woman. You know, a lot of times women think that it's because of misogyny or some type of chauvinistic mindset, but it's really about the mindset of the woman, right? And we see it all the time where women, if they're making more than men, those men are basically lap dogs to her. Like they're dick and lap dogs for her because, you know, mm that that's pretty much their, you know, they don't have a higher purpose for her. They're not for financial protectors, right? You know, they are not, you know, they, I mean, and they may not be physical protectors because a lot of these women have alpha mindsets. So, I mean, a lot of these men really can't do much for these women and they know it and they absolutely know it. And depending on the man, he may want to feel some more valuable, fat, more value to his woman than just, you know, these things, right? And I don't really think that um, these female rappers, right, with these men who may be lower than them, you know what I mean? Even the guys that are lower than you, you, they're, re they're red flags too because then they're prone to want to keep you on a lower frequency by doing some dumb stuff to mess up your program. And Beyonce told us that, right? Like, I forgot that line she said. What did she say? It's, it's there, I hear it. But basically, you was distracting me from my business, right? Cause so I had to deal with you in this crazy way. But I think that, you know, when all is said and done, if Cardi B divorces Offset, he's really not going to have a problem getting into another relationship. Will he be able to get into another relationship with another woman of her caliber? It really depends on what he's doing in his career, right? But neither one of them are going to be able to level up from the other one. And a lot of people may feel like that's not true of Cardi B, but she's really just an artificial woman. She's full of facial surgery. She's not natural. So you can tell there's a lot of deeply seated self-hate there. And a lot of men look at women who have an artificial, you know, this obsession with vanity and they can't, you know, age gracefully. They can't, you know, really exist without, you know, makeup and being natural you know, a lot of men, you know, they notice stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's not attractive to them. Like there are some men who don't find people like Cardi B attractive. And when you know the background of a woman too, it makes her even less attractive. That's why I think 
Cardi B doesn't really have an organic, even sex appeal towards, you know, for a lot of men. I really don't think she has a sex appeal for a lot of men. And, you know, and say what you want about Offset, you know, he's like future. You know, these men, they have charm on their side. And, you know, unfortunately, Offset will always do better in a relationship post this divorce than Cardi B. He'll probably be bounce around from one woman, but he'd be the most likely to get married before she will. Because now she has three kids leaving him. She's going to have her third child with him, right? And you have a harlot's background, right? A lot of people are like, well, she stuck by him all those years, but there's rumors that even she cheated on him. So she's not going to have as easy of a time being with somebody else or at least, you know, getting with somebody else as um, Offset would. And even if she were to get with somebody else, she's going to get somebody who's significantly lower and nine times out of 10, that man is going to get on her nerves too. And that's going to end up in divorce. That is really kind of a prediction for Cardi B. Even if she gets some simpleton man that might be a little bit lower, it's, end up, it's going to end up in divorce. I, unfortunately, because there's no balance there, you know, and that's the sad life of super successful women. That is the sad life for super successful women. It's like, you know, you either going to get a guy that's on a lower frequency than you, and he's going to either bring you down to a lower frequency, or he's going to, you know, be okay with your elevation, right? You know, above him, you know, or, <clears throat> you know, and, and I don't think that, you know, or you find a guy that's on your level and that is significantly hard to find a man that's on the same wealth level as you, that's not expecting for you to have some level of submission, right? To him in some degree as well. So, you know, companionship is really, you know, the ultimate fate of highly successful women like Cardi B. And if I'm wrong about that, somebody, if you are a highly successful woman and you have been married multiple times and you have children, young children, and you found it easy to replace your ex, your mate, and you were a stripper as well. And maybe you are doing some inter, you know, highly, you know, adult entertainment type stuff now. Were you able to replace your man easily? Let us know. What was your sauce? But anyways, let me know. And what you think about this, I didn't expect for this to be so long, but I got to get out of here um, to run over to my sisters. Um, but you all, have, you all have a wonderful evening. Happy Sabbath to those who observe, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Did it suck?